Become the gardener of your dreams and let's add custom crops to Minecraft. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. All right, before I back to another one's morning, in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom crop to Minecraft. And that was a speed world record for how fast I could do an intro. And we're going to add a custom crop over here. It's going to be a little bit convoluted, but no worries. We're going to get through this. So first of all, for a custom crop, you're going to need a custom block class. So in the custom package, we're going to make a new class and we'll call this the tomato crop block. There we go. And this will extend the crop block class over here. We're going to hover over this and create constructor matching super. And in theory, we could be done. But of course, it's not quite that easy because the crops over here are going to have something that's called a block state property. Now, a block state property as a high level overview just means that each one of the blocks that you set down in the world can have a different variable associated with them. For example, if I middle mouse button click on the crop blob, you can see it's going to be the age, of course, right? So because, of course, two different wheat next to each other can have different ages, and that is all handled with a integer property. You might say, well, why can't I just do a like public static int, right? Age, bam, there you go. All of a sudden, I got it. No, this would be shared by all blocks in the world of that particular type. And of course, if all wheat blocks have the same age all at the same time, would be a little strange. By the way, no, you can't get around this by doing public int age because once again, the block is only created once. The block states are what are inside of the world. So do keep that in mind. And for our tomato crop, this doesn't work anyway because the max age is not seven. We have a different max age. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to say public static final int max underscore age. And that's going to be for our tomato crop five. And then we have a public static final int property called age and this is going to be int property dot of you can see it already suggests this to us this is going to be zero to five it might actually already exist and it does actually already exist so you could also instead of making it like this we could say properties dot age underscore five and that would also work either one is fine and then there are some methods to override the first one is the append properties method this one is probably the most important one because the age property right here you can see it's not used right now and it has to be used by doing builder.add and then passing in the age property right here. If you don't do this, you're going to get an error and it's not going to work properly. We also want to override the get max age method. We want to override the get age property method. And lastly, we want to override the get seeds item method. The get max age should be fairly self-explanatory. We're just putting in the max underscore age right here. Age property, just returning age and also making this public. That's quite important as well. And then when it comes to the seed item, we're going to make a deliberate error because we have not yet created that seed item. Because to actually get the seed item, we, we first need to register the block and we're going to do that right here. So this is going to be a public static final block. We're going to call this the tomato underscore crop. And this is going to be equal to registry dot register registries dot block. Then a new identifier of tutorial mod mod ID. The name here is tomato underscore crop. After the first closing parentheses, we're make, gonna make a new tomato crop block, very important. And then we'll do fabric block settings dot copy of, and we'll copy blocks dot wheat. And there you go. What you will realize is that I have not used the register block method. Why is this the case? Well, we do not want a block item over here because when you think about it, wait a second, a crop block, right? Like wheat, you don't set that down. You're like, you don't have a block associated with that. The item that's associated with that is the seeds. And that's exactly right. And that's what we're going to do right here. So we will need the seeds. Now we already have a tomato. That's awesome. But of course, the seeds are a little bit different. Those are going to be a public static final item. And they're going to be called tomato underscore seeds. And this is register item. Absolutely no worries. This is the tomato underscore seeds. A new alias block item. I'll explain what that means in just a moment. We then want to pass in mod blocks dot tomato crop. And the second parameter is going to be new fabric item settings with no additional setting is needed. Let's first of all go right here to the class again, to the item class, to the block class, and let's say mod items dot tomato seeds. This is going to be the seeds item, and now all of them are basically put together properly. Why the alias block item? Well, if we go into the en underscore use json file to add our translation, you can see what I can do is I can say tutorial mod tomato underscore seeds, and this is going to give the tomato seeds this particular translation key. If I did not do that, then I would have to write block tutorial mod tomato underscore crop, which is of course a little bit weird, right? And then we would still have to name it tomato seeds. So that's why we use a alias block item. Basically, this is a block item that 
uses this name instead of the name of the block to translate its item, basically. Well, down here, we can also add the textures. So the block textures are, of course, the first very interesting thing. And that is going to be these ones right here. So you can see this is the tomato and it starts growing. It's going to be very interesting once we see it in game. And when it comes to the items, well, we only need the seeds over here. Let's copy this over as well. There you go. That is going to be the tomato seeds. And that should be all we need here. We, of course, also want to add the seeds to the item group. Let's not forget that because otherwise I'm, I might forget that. But there you go. The tomato seeds added and then data gen. Let's start with the easy thing. And the easy thing is the model over here because luckily Fabric provides us a really, really easy way to register the crop. I, or maybe it's vanilla actually, but it is just the register crop method over here. Register crop. There you go. You want to pass in modblocks.tomato crop. And then the second one is going to be the tomato crop class. Tomato crop block class dot h this is the h property and then you just want to basically go through all of the indices of your textures so in this case we're going to go from zero to five if you take a look at this from zero to five there we go the c texture gets added automatically so we don't even need to generate that manually the only other thing is going to be the loot oh the loot is a little bit more complicated than uh, you might think at first glance because for this we actually need a block state property loot condition for this, I will be copying over the two lines that we're going to need, but I will explain. So you can see we have a block state property loot condition that builder, right? It's called builder. Fair enough. And we're building this for the tomato crop with the following property. We want an exact match of H5. What does that mean? Well, we only want the tomato crop to drop tomatoes if this particular property is fulfilled. In this case, it is exactly age five, which is equivalent to his max age. And that's why this is so important, because obviously if you didn't have that and you were just like, oh, yeah, just drop whenever. Well, then you could just like plant a tomato seed, chop off the crop and the tomato would drop. That wouldn't make a lot of sense for a custom crop, of course. You can go to the vanilla block loot table generator. And if you were to search for weed over here, you will find exactly the same thing. A block state property loot condition builder over here for with exactly the same thing, pretty much. Highly recommend it to take a look at that if this interests you a little bit more. But overall, this shouldn't be too crazy to understand. It pretty much just says, hey, we're only going to drop the crop if the specific age is matched. Otherwise, we're just going to drop seeds. And crazy enough, that's actually everything that we need to do. So we can now run the data gen and that should generate all of our different JSON files that we're going to need. And once that is through, we have one more thing to take a look at. But let's just let it run through. There you go. Nine files. That should be totally fine. And then the last thing is that, of course, we have some alpha values in the actual block for this we're just going to duplicate the block render layer map over here and we're going to say tomato crop also gets the cutout and then everything should be fine and this is everything we need so let's jump into the game and grow some tomatoes all right we found us back in minecraft and let's take a look and see if we can plant some of our tomatoes and of course we can plant them absolutely freaking awesome and if i bone meal them you can see they're growing in all sorts of stages and that is the last stage over here. Of course, change to survival mode if you want to actually harvest them. And you can see, there we go. And then down here, it only is going to drop tomato seeds. However, if they're fully grown, then you can see they're going to drop the actual tomatoes. Absolutely freaking awesome. And let's plant them again. And there you go. So that is a pretty freaking awesome indeed. And that is custom crops added to Minecraft. And that's already it for this tutorial right here. But we're not done gardening just yet because in this video right here, we'll also tackle a two-block high crop, a highly requested topic. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.